music therapy and cultural diplomacy, music as a tool for nation building. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Indra Selvaraja and I am a music therapist and academician from University Putra, Malaysia. I'm also the founding president of the Malaysian Music Therapy Association, current vice president of the Malaysian Society for Music and Medicine, strategic development and finance committee member under the International Association for Music and Medicine and program lead for the development of the first music therapy master's program for Malaysia. I'm also currently a member of the UNDP Working Group to translate the SDG's impact measurement model into real-world music therapy innovation and technological solutions. Under the auspices of its Cultural Diplomacy Discourse Series, I have been invited as a panel speaker by the National Department for Culture and Arts to address how music therapy and cultural diplomacy can work together towards nation building, as exemplified by the World Federation of Music Therapy Crisis Intervention work that I am currently helming under the World Federation of Music Therapy Council. As the first Malaysian elected to the World Federation of Music Therapy Council, I am proud to raise the Malaysian flag high on this prestigious international platform, which is aimed at mobilizing networks of music therapy associations and professionals to serve communities in crisis all across the globe. Hence, I'm here to share my experiences with you as current chair of the World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission. At this point, I'm sure many of you are wondering how music therapy and cultural diplomacy can be juxtaposed. In this session, I will share two real-world insights into the type of work that I've been doing for the World Federation of Music Therapy, which embeds principles of cultural diplomacy into music therapy crisis intervention. It is a complex and multifaceted role, which involves many countries and cultures simultaneously. It also requires the establishment of multiple channels of communication with music therapists, crisis workers, government and non-government bodies in many countries who may all have different communication styles, navigating through different cultural norms and standards of appropriate conduct constantly dealing with tensions and opposing sides, all in the name of solving critical problems at hand. You will see that skills of cultural diplomacy are vital in managing crisis situations, as the nature of crisis intervention work is more often than not sensitive, involving people who are highly vulnerable and traumatized, as they are in physical and psychological danger and unstable situations. Often, they are also facing political dangers that are real and an ever-present threat. Hence, cultural diplomacy is the essential tool that enables the World Federation of Music Therapy to manage expectations on all sides, identify common values and shared ideals, while putting together strategic action plans to prioritize and address the most critical needs. It also means being able to quickly size up situations and deliver real-world solutions that encourage input from all sides and can reconcile between conflicts of interest. Only then do we proceed to identify the ways in which music therapy can provide various levels of support that bring hope and healing to the community in crisis. I believe there are many lessons that can be drawn from this session that are applicable towards problem solving in view of Malaysia's current needs. According to the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy, cultural diplomacy is the act of promoting a series of thoughtfully designed actions and activities to encourage the mutual exchange of ideas, values, traditions, and other aspects of culture or identity in order to strengthen relationships, enhance social cultural cooperation, promote national interests, and more. In the context of my World Federation of Music Therapy work, these are the five principles of cultural diplomacy, which I have adapted and directly applied into our music therapy crisis intervention work. These principles are the key cornerstones which I use to approach each crisis situation in order to establish diplomatic relations as part of the initial contact and conduct a rapid assessment of the situation's most critical needs. The five principles are respecting and recognizing each other's cultural diversity and heritage. In the case of music therapy, this begins with cultural humility. Creating intercultural dialogues between all main parties to seek mutual understanding and advocate for shared values. Seeking justice, equality, and independence 
by advocating for accessibility and affordability in providing music therapy services. In crisis situations, the poor and underprivileged are often hardest hit. Championing human rights in terms of protecting the most vulnerable, this includes special needs children and protecting poor populations. Achieving psychological stability and security in order to promote ongoing coping. These five principles are consistent with the values of cultural engagement for the World Federation of Music Therapy. We hold ourselves up to high ethical standards and seek to uphold these values throughout all our work, including our crisis intervention work. Translating these principles into real world situations is often difficult as we navigate in precarious and dangerous circumstances. Nonetheless, I have found that taking the time to practice these principles as points of entry into the crisis intervention often results in the development of stronger relationships, friendships, and cooperation beyond the crisis, once the crisis itself has been stabilized. In short, music therapy and cultural diplomacy is an approach currently adopted by the World Federation of Music Therapy, Global Crisis Intervention Commission to navigate the difficult challenges of interpersonal relationships between people from different cultures during times of global crisis. The way that the World Federation of Music Therapy works is that we are directly plugged into the network of music therapy organizations and associations worldwide. Hence, the role of the Global Crisis Intervention Commission is primarily to support the needs of music therapists affected by or responding to trauma, crisis, both natural and human-made across the world. My commission facilitates communication and maintains a collection of materials and information to use in disasters or traumatic crisis situations to inform and facilitate the work of music therapists responding to crises around the world. Our goals are, number one, to aid in the support, communication and dispersion of information for music therapists responding to the needs of people affected by disasters or trauma in their respective countries. Two, to provide a lifeline of support to music therapists involved in and responding to disasters or traumatic events around the world. Three, to update and maintain best practice guidelines, references and other related evidence-based research information that aid music therapists responding to disaster or trauma events. Four, conduct technical trainings where specialized skills are needed. And five, create regional care teams to provide proactive training and support networks for music therapy organizations around the world who will need to be prepared to implement best practices and inform trauma crisis interventions when the crisis arises. On a side note, the values that I embody in undertaking this World Federation of Music Therapy role are no different than the values that I developed and learned growing up as a child in Malaysia. These values were only reinforced and strengthened following my return from pursuing advanced training overseas. Equipped with my Malaysian values and overseas exposure, I have been navigating both international and lo local platforms, trying to solve real world problems through music therapy, including creating a better future for my fellow Malaysians. In whatever ways that I can contribute, it is my strong conviction that we as a multicultural nation have much to offer the global community. We in Malaysia have the golden opportunity to become true champions of diversity, equity and inclusion, provided we don't take our multicultural status for granted and don't allow politics to divide and destroy the fragile trust among the races. The Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Snapshots that I will now share with you are meant to vividly demonstrate principles of cultural diplomacy at work, intricately interwoven into our strategic actions and initiatives, which we are expanding through our upcoming World Federation of Music Therapy Care Teams initiative. I hope that these snapshots will provide some fresh inspiration and insight as we explore ways to bring our very own Kaluarga Malaysia to greater heights. I'm going to share with you two particular crisis intervention projects that stand out to me due to the severity and difficulty of both circumstances. Both occurred during the COVID-19 pandemic. I started the role at the cusp of the COVID-19 pandemic in July, 2020. I was thrust full force into the role 
of the Global Crisis Intervention Commission Chair right when the COVID-19 pandemic was exploding around the world. And very little was known at that time about the nature and trajectory of the coronavirus, let alone how to manage it. Less than two weeks into the role, the World Federation of Music Therapy was thrust into its first dual crisis, that is, a chemical explosion crisis in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. I was entrusted to oversee and manage the first calls for help sounded by local music therapists trying to serve the community in Lebanon following the aftermath of the August 8, 2020 Beirut City port explosion. The World Federation of Music Therapy was called to directly intervene and to support the needs of Lebanese music therapists, some of whom were themselves traumatized and directly affected as well as were trying their best to reach out to their community and offer trauma support in the midst of battling the pandemic, which placed a lot of restrictions and additional safety concerns in terms of the community's needs for physical and psychological safety. Due to the ongoing pandemic and unstable internal political situation, the World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission had no choice but to work quietly with whatever limited resources were on the ground as the Lebanese music therapists were trying to provide support to traumatized civilians in the aftermath of the explosion, including families and children with minimal infrastructure support and unstable conditions. The ongoing pandemic had already stretched and strained the healthcare system in Beirut City. Managing the bomb explosion crisis in the midst of the pandemic required new ways of thinking about how to forge global alliances in order to mitigate the effects of this pandemic. This included calling upon the American Music Therapy Association COVID-19 Task Force, who was the most advanced and responsive at the point in handling the COVID-19 pandemic. I mobilized international support across these various international music therapy agencies to provide crisis support for Beirut, as it had to be done very quickly. I would like to acknowledge the role and support of strong international allies, such as the American Music Therapy Association, who have provided significant support to the World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission. These are some of the key considerations that I had to address from a cultural diplomacy perspective. As a Malaysian, it was a steep learning curve for me, but also a very humbling experience as I had to very quickly adopt a cultural humility stance and educate myself about local cultural customs and norms to ensure that I tread carefully in dealing with local cultural sensitivities and sensibilities. It helped tremendously that I came from a multicultural background, being born and bred in Malaysia, growing up alongside many different races. What also helped was the fact that the Lebanese music therapists spoke very good English. Language acted as a direct bridge to cultural connection. My first communications with the Lebanese music therapists after weeks of searching were mainly to establish rapport, build trust, and communicate support from the World Federation of Music Therapy, including Lebanese music therapists who were based in France, who were worried about the local situation at home. The support of the World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission brought the Lebanese music therapists a measure of comfort, knowing that the wider family of music therapists around the world cared about them and wanted to help traumatized Lebanese civilians, many of whom consisted of families with young children. One thing that I noted from my experience dealing with the Lebanese music therapists is that they are tremendously resilient and community-minded. In all my dealings with them, the needs of the community were at the forefront of their consciousness, and there was no mention of concerns over their individual safety. Beirut is a very old city with a rich and turbulent history plagued by war, and the Lebanese people have already experienced a lot of suffering from over 30 years of military occupation and civil war. Their focus was mainly on what they could do as music therapists to help the community express themselves, alleviate residual trauma from the explosion, and teach children and families coping skills. How bad was the explosion? In terms of the explosion itself, the blast was compared to the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The impact was 10% of the atomic bomb that leveled Hiroshima in World War II. Experts say that Beirut blast is among the largest 
non-nuclear blasts in human history. The explosion was caused by accidental detonation of a massive ammonium nitrate fertilizer stockpile at Beirut port. It killed more than 200 people, wounded more than 5,000, and more than 300,000 were displaced and left homeless. 163 schools were damaged by the blast, and according to reports, one in four children missed school following the blast. Beirut's largest port was crippled. Beirut port is a major lifeline of support for the Lebanese people. Before the blast, 90% of Lebanon's food imports came through the port. Following the blast, there was a major loss of food stockpiles, including Lebanon's main grain silos, leading to a severe food shortage. As a result, more than half of the population failed to access basic food needs. Beirut City itself is Lebanon's economic engine, and Beirut City is Lebanon's capital and main economic engine, where it was already struggling with unprecedented economic hardship before the disaster, the explosion was a devastating blow to a country already facing its worst economic crisis in decades, and a series of lockdowns aimed at curbing the spread of COVID-19. The devastation of Beirut port city was very real, and it was imperative that crisis intervention support was given up to the point that the therapists were out of crisis mode and the civilian situation could be stabilized. The concerted work of the World Federation of Music Therapy ultimately led to different representative groups within Lebanon seeking to join the World Federation of Music Therapy in order to set up the Lebanese Music Therapy Association as well as seek program development advisement under the World Federation of Music Therapy. The initial crisis intervention work led to more advanced music therapy consultation and development work in Lebanon to benefit the community. The next snapshot is more recent, from the ongoing Ukraine war crisis. Back in February 2022, when news of the Russian invasion of Ukraine first broke, I received requests from Lithuanian music therapists who were trying to cater to the first wave of Ukrainian refugees fleeing from the war to provide crisis intervention support. Following a detailed assessment of the developing Ukraine war and numerous conversations with various international partners, including a music therapy advisor to the US American Red Cross, I gathered a group of music therapy experts specialized in psychological first aid and trauma-informed care with refugees with vast experience working with refugees in disaster and crisis situations to discuss what was at stake and how could we address the range of needs that had been highlighted. The inherent complexities of the Ukraine war required finding ways to support both internally displaced people, also known as IDPs, folks running for safety from town to town inside Ukraine, as well as the refugees, Ukrainian residents fleeing Ukraine to neighboring countries. Most of these refugees sought refuge in Poland, and 90% of the refugees were made up of women and children, as fathers, brothers, and grandfathers were forced to stay back in Ukraine and fight the war. Hence, we were also dealing with families who were traumatized because they had been ripped apart by the war. On the cultural diplomacy front, it meant giving myself a crash course into Ukrainian culture, history, and heritage, including understanding the intricacies of the war, starting from the tense history between Russia and Ukraine, in order to sensitively navigate between the two warring countries, as there were casualties on both sides. It was not just the Ukrainian people who were suffering, but also Russian and Belarusian music therapy colleagues who were equally traumatized and felt they had no say in their governments choosing to go to war and invade Ukraine. It also meant using the music of the Ukrainian people to create an arts platform for the international community to respect, elevate, and recognize their cultural diversity and celebrate their rich cultural heritage. It became clear that where war could physically destroy the nation, even as military tanks bulldozed through towns, and missiles exploded in civilian dwellings, the war could not destroy the spirit and soul of the Ukrainian people. I implemented three global initiatives on behalf of the World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission 
which included providing music therapy technical assistance in the form of two music therapy training webinars, which focus on music therapy and psychological first aid for refugees, based on previous music therapy case studies, including music therapy intervention work with Palestinian refugees. The main objective of this webinar was to provide music therapists currently working with refugees or are in countries preparing to receive the refugees with specialized training and technical support. This webinar was participated by more than 500 participants from 32 countries, which shows how music therapy was able to bring people of similar interest together out of a shared compassion and interest to learn about how to help using music therapy crisis intervention during a time of war. The World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission, in collaboration with the International Kodai Symposium and the International Choir Conductors Federation, also created another platform using songs as a safe space to provide resources to music therapists providing trauma-informed care and psychological first aid to refugees who felt displaced. This webinar platform, entitled Songs of Resilience and Hope, Music Therapy During a Time of War, was created to support all those affected by the Ukraine crisis, using music therapy as a healing catalyst and an intervening strand to build hope, healing and resilience during a time of war. We use music as a means to provide solidarity and psychosocial support, as well as promote cultural preservation in the midst of the ongoing war. We advocated for shared values where people from different countries, from Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, the US, Romania, the UK, Germany, Denmark, all the way to friends in Indonesia and Malaysia, could gather together and share folk songs and offer messages of encouragement to promote hope and resilience in refugees and build a bridge of connection to the host countries. I shared about the roles of songs in music therapy and trauma to provide psychological first aid to refugees and the effects of war to help supporters better understand how music could be used therapeutically to intervene during a time of war. As Ms. Oksana Suketsa, a Ukrainian choir conductor and fellow music lecturer currently hiding out with 200 refugees inside Ukraine said, the World Federation of Music Therapists' efforts in creating musical connections serve to remind the people of Ukraine that we are not alone, that there are many good people in the world supporting us, and that is our greatest comfort and support in our time of need. This music therapy event was witnessed by more than 3,000 people online, which shows that the message of friendship, solidarity and support travelled far and wide across the globe. The World Federation of Music Therapy Global Crisis Intervention Commission also prepared and disseminated three music therapy care packages of resources, which consisted of evidence-based top sheets, music materials, research summaries, guidelines, journal literature, and useful links to send out to music therapists working with those affected by the Ukraine war crisis, curated and prepared a range of culturally sensitive and appropriate musical resources for sending over to music therapists on the ground, serving the critical needs of refugees who were casualties of the Ukraine war, in collaboration with the International Choral Conductors Federation and International Kodai Society. We also initiated an instrument donation drive, a ukulele instrument donation drive in joint collaboration with the Ukulele Kids Club to support music therapists working with children and families impacted by the Ukraine war crisis by assisting them to obtain free ukulele and materials to support crisis intervention work with the refugees in camps. I provided a variety of media presentations about music therapy and crisis intervention, including a TED Talk, to aid in the ukulele fundraising campaign and advocate for more support to the Ukraine crisis. It also gave me the opportunity to advocate for various other humanitarian efforts in support of refugees worldwide. As you can see, not only were these series of music therapy activities designed to provide a variety of musical support during both crisis incidents, they were also intentionally designed to integrate the five principles of cultural diplomacy at various levels into the actual implementation of activities. This was done to leverage on networks, build relationships, and spur the humanitarian efforts forward. 
Throughout the activities adopted, we stayed consistent in practicing cultural humility, elevating and celebrating cultural diversity and heritage, creating opportunities for intercultural dialogue between different countries, creating a safe space for difficult conversations to be carried out in a mutually respectful manner, where all parties feel equally heard, provided a platform to work out our differences and engage in conflict resolution, promoting inclusion and advocating for the needs of diverse groups to be mutually supportive and to discover our shared values. In light of our Prime Minister's aspirations to build and strengthen Kluarga Malaysia or Malaysian family, I believe there are many actions that were demonstrated in my sharing today that describe how music therapy and cultural diplomacy can functionally contribute towards the promotion of inclusivity, the development of real togetherness, and a spirit of thanksgiving that are all central tenets of Kaluaga Malaysia. As envisioned by Yang Ahmad Burhormat Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri bin Yaakob, Please permit me to end with the hallowed words of our Prime Minister. Umpama selamba benang, dikait ditenun dan dijalin, akhirnya menjadi kain yang sempurna indahnya. Like a spool of thread, knitted, woven and intertwined, finally being woven into a beautiful, perfect fabric. These insightful words are both timely and necessary. It serves as an important reminder that if we are to help Malaysia move forward as one effective and united nation, we will need the courage to start listening to each other and seek to better understand each other's perspectives. We need genuine empathy to bridge across our racial and cultural differences and learn how to leverage on our difference and diversity as core strengths. I am convinced that if we can learn to do that, we will become unstoppable as a nation. Just like the woven cloth, our fate and our future are intertwined. United we stand, divided we will fall. Thank you. <laughs>